Good morning, everyone. Dark Sizzle and Putin coming at you this morning, and it feels like it's noon, but it's actually like nine o'clock, and it's way late than we would normally come out fishing, but we're doing something a little different today. Yeah, and uh, we're doing something a little different today, something we've never, ever done on our own boat by ourselves. We've always done this with other people, and that is deep dropping. And we are excited. We got our rigs, we got our gear, we got our weights. And you just spent like a couple hundred dollars in a tackle shop, no big deal. <laughs> now let's go out and lose all the rigs. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah, kidding. we'll see what happens. You know, again, we've never done this on our own. We you know some general areas and talking to people and doing some research. Yeah, fishing with people. And we have, the, and we have one of those uh, contour maps, some strike, strike line charts. So uh, yes. we're gonna, this is how you fish. We're going to do some water time, figure it out. Yes. And whatever we end up figuring out, of course, we'll share with you on the Fishing Angler app. There you go. Let's roll. All right, guys, we're like 860 feet. And it looks like a decent area. Again, we don't know too much. Kind of just going on a whim and like picking a good area that we see on the map and on the fishing lure app and just decided to drop here. And then we'll continue to move. You know, we'll just start in a spot and you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. And we're using for deep dropping. This is a Daiwa Tanacom Bull. Pretty uh, standard deep dropping reel and kite fishing reel. This is the 750. We got it on a bent butt. Uh, <laughs> Peter Barrett rod. Plug it in over there, Sizzle. All right, you ready, Sizzle? We're going to try our first drop. I think so. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hold on, let me get this cam the camera on. You got to let a, line, let a lot of line out because Brian's going to be driving forward the whole time. Yeah, we're going to do a technique because there's so much current. We're going to about three and a half knots of current heading north. So we're going to, almost like a stored fish thing, we're going to go south with the line out and then we're going to kind of drift back where the line goes down and Darcy the whole time will be on the electric reel picking up the line and keeping it bouncing on the bottom and hopefully not getting stuck. So uh, let's go. Let's do it. Drop it in. You say you're going to drop it for me. Oh, I'm going to drop it for you. Ahead. Okay, we, we're going to go forward and drop it in. Got it. All right, hold on. I'm going to turn one spool. That's the way you do it, right? Yeah. Very exciting. We didn't hit bottom. I know, but it's gonna drift back. Look how far out it is. It's gonna come down now. How far out is it? 260. You have to let it out like way past 800, like 1100 to get to the bottom. Okay. So this is gonna be, now we're just reaching 900. You're always gonna have more out than the depth. So. All right, now it's just dropping. Having a little bit of a frustrating time, but you know, that's kind of what happens when you try new things and you really don't know anything about it. Like it's the first time we're using this reel and this rod um, out here deep dropping. But look what we just caught. Looks like we did hit find the bottom or somewhere close to the bottom. Check that out. That is a six gill, I believe. This guy has the coolest eyes. Look at these huge green eyes on them. And yeah, that, no, maybe that's not a six gill. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure actually, but he's super cool looking. Really neat shark from the deep. All right, I just want to show you guys something. Look at these freaking spines on his dorsal fin. One in the back, look at how sharp that is. One in the front, look how sharp that is. I almost got poked. And there's actually one coming out of his claspers down there. Do you see that? That is insane. I've never seen a shark with so many spines that look like catfish spines. Bye, buddy. And he's gone. All right, we're moving some spots and doing a little practicing. Darcy's getting pretty good at keeping it on the bottom. Uh, so down now we're off of Pompano or Hillsboro. And the spot that looks like pretty sure there's fish here, whether we're gonna catch him is another situation. Brian marked fish on the low range. I marked fish on my low range depth finder. And uh, there's some other guys here at, and we fish here with some other folks, so this could we be it. Hit. We just hit. Locking it up. Locking it up. We're 860 feet. We got fish on. Hold it, easy, easy, easy. Let him morg it on. We eat it. <laughs> How are you going to fish on? Oh, oh, that's a good one. Are you reeling up? I'm trying to hook them. All right, well, don't get too crazy. If you get some on there, if you get some up there, reel them up. <laughs> I know. We did this with Fish Angler Boat. That's a great video. So we got a lot of good lessons there. Captain Mike. Captain Mike Clear, he was awesome. It's not that easy when you're 900 feet to tell if you have a thing or not. My depth finder is only reading 134 feet now, so that's good. All right, we're not sure what's going on. What's going on? Could be a fish. 
Yeah, the reels make some funny noise too. I'm sorry, I didn't have the audio thing plugged in, so you can get the audio and all that excitement. So I'm gonna redo the excitement right now. <gasps> Woo! We caught it! Every <laughs> hook! Fish? Every hook! This is the biggest rosy we've ever seen. And honestly, <laughs> we were like getting bites the second those baits went down, and they ate all of them within like the first minute of me fishing the bottom. And I kind of fished the bottom for another 15 minutes, but it really wasn't worth it because honestly, they were on there. And uh, but, like the last hundred feet, it started getting tougher and tougher for the rod to bring up this whole stringer of fish, which is odd because it's supposed to be the opposite. Like as they come up closer and closer to the surface, the easier it is, but it was harder for some reason. But you know what? We just did this all by ourselves. That's sick. And I told Ryan, I'm like, keep going south, keep going south. That's where the fish are at. All right, this is the biggest freaking rosy we've ever seen. Like this thing is come huge again. right there. I'm so excited to have rose fish. They're delicious. And I'm gonna show you right now why they're called black belly rosefish. Also known as sculpin, right, in Miami? In Miami, they're called sculpin. Yeah, they call them sculpin in Miami. Oh, sweet, man. We gotta go get some more. Stoked. All right, so right in here. Let's see if I can open this up. We got black mouths. Yeah, black Look belly, see, black belly rosefish. Black, black, black. Yeah. There you go. And they don't really have too much teeth, as you can see right there. Very similar to like a grouper or like just little tiny teeth. You can put your fingers on it. it won't tear you up too bad. It's kind of like a bass. But that is a big boy right there. They don't get much bigger than that. That's like the biggest we've ever seen. And then the rest down there that are about- the biggest I've ever seen. Yeah. The rest down there are about average size. But these things are so good. And he's so cold from the bottom. So crazy. They don't have any air bladders either, right? I don't think so. They can swim back down. They come off. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is that these fish are actually like un, in federal waters, they're like kind of unregulated, which means you can catch like a hundred pounds or something. But they're, and they also, like this one could be like 60 years old. Yes. I don't, I don't want to say crazy numbers, but they live the old age, like these, like in the thirties or forties years yes. old, they're totally that. So you don't want to kill a ton of them, but they're delicious. Maybe we'll do another drop or two. We don't need 50 of these things. No, but we're trying to find in the golden tile too. Yeah, we're trying this to find the golden, golden tile zone. That's yeah. another nice one. And then there's a couple small guys on there, but it's funny that the biggest fish ate the big the, the hook furthest away from the weight. These guys live directly on the bottom in the mud. Nice. Let's get some more. All right, I'll get them back in a second. Let's can we can you start heading that way and I'm going to put baits on and then uh Yeah, I am heading that way. I gotta get him off the hook still. Like two miles away. What, babe? Probably two miles away. I know it drifted so far. One and a half miles. Okay, hang on, hang on. I am. I'm just gonna go the speed right here. We'll be there. And... Whoop whoop! All right, guys, you gonna try another drop? You ready, Sizzle? I think so. All right, pointing south. Just, we're just watch our wheel a little bit. Hold on, stretch those hooks out. You ready? You gonna tilt it to the left. There you go. You ready? Yeah. Noise. Now I'm keeping the boat headed south a little bit. Now the advanced option to do this, the swordfish guys go really fast this direction, but we're taking it nice and easy. 
I'm really just trying to stay in line or keep up with the car, which is like three knots out here. So right now my boat's moving to 0.8. I think it's actually probably moving backwards. And I'm doing 11 RPM, 1100 RPMs. Thing is scoped out. And now when she, I'm gonna slow down the drift and the just in gear and the, and the weight's gonna go down. It's scoped out and it's gonna go down like this, hit the bottom. And then as we drift back, she's gonna be taking up line, keeping it on the bottom. If all goes like the plan, it's gonna be instant this time. If all goes the plan. We're using eight pounds and three currents of water, three yeah, now we're using knots of water. Right, three knots, eight pounds, we're at 856 feet. How many got out? 320. There. there. At bottom. Now I'm just in gear. And it's still gonna drift back fine so she can regulate it on the bottom. There we go. Oh, we're getting taps. Getting bites. And once you get one bite, just like if you're using a sabiki, you want to kind of jerk it or get, wait for the other fish to get on. Because you saw we had five fish last time, so you don't want to just rip it up when you have one fish on, because they'll jump on. All right, we're pulling it up. We think we got some fish. Yeah. It almost got stuck on the bottom there, but we'll see what happens. It did get stuck, but it's coming up now. There's fish on there. <laughs> <laughs> This little weird line it's making, it's annoying, but... Yeah, I gotta get this real fixed. That tells us there's a fish. Nothing. One. Two! Oh, I went too low. All right. All right. Yeah, it looks like our reel definitely needs some service here. But you know what? That's okay. We got some more rosies. Woo! Two. Can't complain about two. There they are. Two is better than zero. Two is awesome. I honestly thought Turn we had like a lot more fish on there, but it looks like our reel, like I said, just needs some service and work. We haven't used it in quite a bit, but there you go. That's about your average size black belly rose fish right there. These two guys, I've seen a lot of them this size. So nice to get back on them. Did a slightly different drift that time because like we said, we're exploring. We're trying different areas and learning more about deep dropping. But so far, two for two on drops and we got fish both times. I think that's pretty good for novices like us. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're catching two fish at once, I think, <laughs> I think you're doing okay. <laughs> All right. All right, turn around right away. All right. If you want, get back on that same spot or try something different. But that, uh, that weight definitely got stuck for a second. Yeah, that wouldn't have pulled up any fish. This sucks. All right, I'm not, I don't know what's going on I'm with this the reel. The reel. Yeah, I know. We'll see. It needs to get serviced, obviously. I mean, it's pretty stuck. Do you think it has one I more mean, drop maybe, in it? I mean, no? that's, did I loosen it or that's how it was right there? how it was. Oh, gotta be tighter probably. I didn't touch it. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. Do you think we have one more drop to do? Yeah, let's that? do it. I mean, it's still working. Yeah. I mean, if it definitely sounded worse this time bringing up two little fish, so. Alright guys, we'll do another drift. It's probably, we'll see how the drift goes. I got, the, I got the rod cam on now. Nice. You ready? Ready. Rod cam. All right. We're like almost exactly on that spot. 300. There we go. 320. Nice. All right. Now Darcy's gonna hopefully watch it hook up. Uh, that's bites. That's bites. Hook your butt. <laughs> it's really learned skill between watching the rod tip and knowing the rod and how rough it is and you have an eight pound weight on there. So, the, you know, watch a swordfish guy and like the changes in the tip are just minuscule. Oh! You think you got them on? Reel them up. Oh. You didn't lose them at circle hook, they were on there. I wanna make sure more fish jump on. I don't like how you, I don't like, she lets that thing go slack. I don't like it. I don't let it go slack. If you think you have fish on there, reel it up. Otherwise we're just waiting to catch the bottom. Picking That's it up? fish, yeah. All right, picking it up. See you in five minutes. See, now the rod's not slipping. I can actually see, like, the fish digging. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, nice fish. Come on. Get up here. Oh, oh, oh! Let's back up on that drag a little if we need to. Fine. Oh, oh, oh! How close? Oh, color. Close. Lots of stuff. Color. Real, real, real. Oh. 
What do we got? We got a golden! We got a golden! Yes! Yes! You did it! Yay! Oh, that was really bad. Sorry. <laughs> Don't scratch my bow. Crap. That was really bad. Oh, yeah, buddy! Oh, too bad we gotta leave. We just got on the goldens. We found them. And you can see this weight. It's actually, it was look brand new. Look how banged up it gets down there. 700 yeah. feet of water. Look at the bottom. What about the golden? This was brand new. It's crazy. That's a baby golden. That's our first golden tilefish, though. That's a baby. That is a baby. But it is our target species. We've been talking. I don't think there's a size limit. No. You been, no, there's not. We'll double check, though. So you can see that this guy has an air bladder here. And I'll show you if I can pop this hook out. Beautiful. They fight a little harder than those uh, rosy, so I could tell there was something a little decent better on that rod there. Sure enough, it was a small golden tile fish. They get much bigger than this. There we go. He's got an air bladder in there. I don't know if you can see you can. it. I can see it. He's so pretty though. Look at the colors. Yeah. Gorgeous. Just like translucent looking, yellows, show grays, more, show more towards me, honey, please. greens. I'm just trying to show him the sun. Where grays and greens and just really cool. Look at yeah. them. Yeah. The, the little ones are pretty, pretty, pretty. But we got a golden! How cool is that? Not the biggest one in the world, but still a golden. That counts on our own. And then these guys, we got another beast. That is a big one. That hook almost went in my finger. Got another beast Rosie in the boat. And these guys right here actually do not have oop, do not have a belly or air bladder. So if this fish comes off the hook right at the surface, he can swim straight back down to the bottom. Look at that, another giant. That's a big one right there. So we're getting on big rosies and we just found the golden tiles. Pretty sweet. And like I said, this fish, we could release him if we want to. We just swim right back down to the bottom, but we're not. We're squid, squid for ink. bait, by the way. All right, third drop, last drop. Squid ink. Nice third drop. And extra work for me to do at the house because squid ink like stains the boat. It's terrible. I'll be inside drinking land shark. You clean the boat. But it's worth it for golden tiles, rosies, and land sharks. For me. Our first all right, ever in all our years of fishing. Just goes to show you can do it too. If I can, again, if I can do it. The only thing you might not be able to do is get chicks like me, but fishing you can definitely do. I'm just saying. You ready? Yes. Ryan says he's blessed in the ways of women. I, I'm, yes. When people ask me about how I catch all my fish or how I get all my, my one beautiful woman, <laughs> The good Lord, I say the good Lord has blessed me in the ways of women. If he blessed me in the ways of fish, that would be unfair to the rest of you. So I take, <laughs> I take my, my God-given talents, you know, and I appreciate them. Now this time, I, I, the boat went a little bit further out and I got some other structure for Darcy's gonna have to dance around. So I'm training her at the same time. <laughs> what does that little, mean? The little cliff here, you're gonna have to make sure you go over. A ledge. Oh no. This is how you get better at fishing. You might break off. You might break off. We haven't lost any gear yet. It's not, it's not deep dropping unless you lose a lot of gear. I don't want to break my break off on the last drifts. Your this trip is already over. You caught a ton of fish and we're having a great time. The weight is like 30 bucks. The rig is like 20 bucks. You can make your own. And then if you lose a thousand feet of of, of uh, whatever uh, braid, then you know God knows how much that is. 100 bucks. All right, final drift. We're bringing it up, and it this seems to be something somewhat decent. Uh, you, they started fighting way at the bottom, so we're gonna see what it is. And you see the rod tip going crazy. We are gonna see what we got on the line. It's coming up quick. 50 meters. Woo! Digging, digging. Yes, my reel needs work, guys. What we got? It looks like it's a bunch of big rosies. Nice. Pull them up, woman. Uh, oh, you got that eight pound weight. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little baby. Nice. Sweet. Whoa, those are nice ones. Big ones again. Thought we got another golden, but that's okay. We'll come back and get a golden. But look at this. Now you can see really what just happened to this leader. Like it was banging up down there and it looked like bites, but this is sharp. This hurts. Hold that weight for a second. Yeah. Oh, it's heavy. This is a brand new weight we were using. Oh, wow. Look at the difference. We just bought both of those today. Look at the just bottom. bought them today. Yeah. That's how banged up it is down there fishing nine, eight, nine hundred feet deep. Oh, show them the fish. Crazy. The 
More Rosies. We gotta come back and get the big Goldens. Big Goldens live here. This is the area. Well, we'll come back and get them. Hold them up, hold them up. At least we got one today. Got a bunch of Rosies. And we got three fish on the three bottom hooks. Nice. And that first, the first stringer we did, that big giant one was on the very top hook. Awesome. So there they awesome are. Awesome sizzle. We got dinner tonight. We're back at the house, guys, and it's time to fillet up the last couple fish. I've just been out here filleting all the rosies and the tile fish. And this is the bounty of 11 fish in here, as you can see. So it's really not that much meat, all considering things, but we can finish that. It's probably solid three pounds of meat right there. Let's pull out the big boy. I saved him from last. And this fish is very spiny and pointy. They got lots of points all over them. Uh, and there he is, there's the big boy. Ow. Like right here in their eyes too, they've got all kinds of spines and there's just spines covering this whole entire fish. You can wear gloves if you want to. Um, I'm not going to. I get poked all the time fishing, it's no big deal. I just I live with the cuts and the, and the little pokes and I've already got poked by multiple fish. Okay, so here we go. I already sharpened my knife with this adjustable knife sharpener, which is pretty sweet, really nifty tool and it's got on the back of all the different sizes of uh, degrees on it. So I just made sure it's extra sharp, but let's dive right into this. This is Smith's Consumer Products seven inch Lawaya filet knife. Now we're gonna go up into the head and get as much head meat as we can. And here's a little trick. Uh, this little gill plate that sticks out right here sticks out and then right underneath it there's a bone so you're gonna get your knife right under there and just cut forward you see how high we went into the head there instead of cutting straight down you're gonna get a lot more head meat on these fish so turn that knife around and let's go down and just like every other fish i look, like to knock off the fillet on one side and then flip it around and do the same thing and you can just do what works for yourself and a lot of you guys tell me to like leave this intact and then flip the fish over and do it the other way and this just works best for me. And then we're gonna follow the bones down. And this fish is actually an easier fish to fillet. It doesn't have too crazy, like their scales are not too crazy, really teeny orange scales on them. And then they've got pin bones of course. And we're gonna keep those innards intact. But look at how this meat looks down from 850 feet of water. This is gonna be amazing. I don't get to fillet a lot of rosies or have a lot of rosies, so it's just awesome and nice to be filleting and catching my own rosies out there. So we just knocked that fillet off, same exact thing. We're gonna use the same knife to skin it, and the skin is very thin, very thin, but it's not too tough, like you're not gonna cut through it as easy. So practice makes it perfect with anything. And by the way, I'm wearing my uh, new redfish pendant that is currently back in stock on the website. This was the most popular pendant sold over the holidays and I ran out a while ago. So I just got that inventory restocked, which is really, really cool. So if you're interested in any of those necklaces that I hand make, go ahead and check out that information down below, as well as all the other things I have on my website available for sale. And don't forget about the calendars. I'm running out quick and I don't have a lot left. So jump on it. I've got a sale of 20% off going on. And we got pin bones right here, just cutting those out. And that's all set. And then I'll also show you something real quick too. I'm gonna fillet them exact, look, I mean, look how big that fillet is too on that big boy. That's a big fillet for a rosy. Nice and fat, all right. So I'm gonna finish up the other side of the fish, but, and do that off camera. But before I do that, I wanna show you that you actually can get chick meat out of these fish. I was practicing on the smaller ones. All right, and this guy's a big one, so hopefully the cheek meat will be awesome. So what I like to do, you kind of just feel in here and you can feel it's nice and soft in there and just be careful, don't cut yourself. Take your time and just follow the cheek meat around. This goes like up into his mouth right there. And then turn this fish this way. And just cut all the way up to the eye right there. And then kind of Turn it up. And same exact thing just with any other fish. Just make a cut right to the skin line right there. And then take your fingers and pull that chunk of meat right out. Look at that. Awesome. I kind of cut a little, I could have, I missed a little bit of meat there, but let me do it one more time on the other side just to show you. And then we're all set. But Brody Pudding is gonna cook us a delicious meal in the house. And like I said, I'm excited to have some delicious rosies. 
Same exact thing. What I like to do with any fish is kind of leave the flap towards the eyeball. So with the snappers, with the groupers, with any big fish that has a big cheek, triple tail, just make the cut around and then flip up towards the eye. That is my new trick that seems to work with every fish that I take the cheek meat out of. Same exact thing, just make the cut right there to the skin and then pull that cheek meat right out. There we go. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this fish. Um, anything you're interested in that you just saw, information down below in the description, but I'm gonna meet you guys in the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video coming right up. Nice job filleting those rosies. I know you don't get to do that very much, so uh, another great job by Dr. Sizzle, thanks so much. Welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Pudding, Valentine's Day edition. We're killing it over here on Valentine's Day. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Valentine's Day too. And it's about lunchtime, as you can see out the window. So we are having some delicious rosy sandwiches for lunch. And uh, so I just did something really simple. What I did guys was, we had this last night actually, and it was so delicious, I decided to do it again. Last night we had um, taco, rosy tacos. So, but I cooked the fish the same way today. So basically, uh, I got the fish, laid it out, salt and pepper on the fish, and then I uh, fried it up with some coconut oil. Very simple, it took about two minutes on each side, you know, just watch your fish, and then you can poke it with a fork to see that it's done. And then I like to put it on this nice rack here. I would like to put fried fish on that rack. It makes it nice, keeps it nice and crispy. And of course, everything you see here in Puddin's Kitchen, most of it you can find them at Darcy's Amazon store, including the rack, this beautiful pan you guys got me, the blenders, the fryer, all that kind of great stuff's on there, and uh, all our fishing gear and all that stuff too, so check that out from time to time, and you can do your, any sort of shopping on there. Anyway, let's get right to it. Then uh, I toasted some buns, actually. Oh, and I left them in, I left them in onion in the oven while I was doing this, and they burnt to a crisp. We're gonna have to redo those and get right back to you. <laughs> I know. All right, guys, redo. I did a good job. Frank's even here now. I invited Frank over for Valentine's Day. All right, so I, I previously cut up some nice lesin tomato. You can see me using this beautiful stag handle. <laughs> this knife. And we're gonna make some sandwiches. I got some cheddar cheese. They're laughing. Darcy's laughing at me behind the scenes. <laughs> Put on some tomato. Oh, there's the thing going off. Putin's kitchen is on fire, guys. And a little lettuce, some delicious fish, and I got some condiments on the table. I got some different sauces. It's gonna be good. Let's see how Darcy likes it and San Frank. All right, let's go. You know, I don't dive know if you guys- in. Yeah, dive in. Frank is over here having a full conversation with me. I know you can't hear him. <laughs> Very funny. Thanks, Frank. Happy Valentine's Day. Really. Yes, it's, it is great. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> but you know, I don't know if you guys know, but I used to work at, I worked in delis all through high school and half a college, so I am a big sandwich person and I love sandwiches. How's the sandwich? Delicious. Nice. The bomb. Good. Very good. Very good. Brian keeps saying how awesome these rosies are. Mm. Can't get enough. Super good. So we got to go catch more right away. <laughs> but that was awesome. And if you guys have any comments or questions about deep dropping down below. We'll try to answer them for you, even though we consider ourselves nowhere near experts. We're still beginners. Oh, we like to talk about sponsors real quick. Landshark Lager, of course, thank you so much. And the Darcy the Smith's Knives, of course. Darcyzzle 15. Code, everything's always in the description, right? Yes. Don't forget Darcyzzle's website. Mm -hmm. Bracelets and necklaces. Yep. And that's really about it for this. That's it, and fish angler. Fish angler, we're gonna put that spot on the fish angler app. It's very easy to deep drop. You get a little bit of practice, but you gotta know the spots. So Fish Angler has the spots. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you so much <laughs> for watching this episode. We got a lot more epic content coming to you real soon. One of our best days of fishing ever. So stay yes. tuned for that. And, and I'm gonna throw this in. At the end of the week, we're scheduled to fish with a captain who I have been wanting to fish with for years. Don't jinx it. I am not jinxing it. The weather. We need the fish gods we'll everything see. to line up, but we'll, we'll see. see. All right, All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and until next time, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on catching. catching. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Cheers. Day.